national ensign of Saudi Arabia flies as His Royal Highness, the Amir Faisal, Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia, visits the United States Naval Academy at Annapolis. With Admiral Beardall, superintendent of the academy, the prince sees the entire regiment of midshipmen parade in his honor. America's future naval officers salute the Muslim prince, a staunch friend of the United Nations. steamer on the Nile brings a group of American Red Cross workers stationed in the Middle East to see the ancient wonders of Egypt. Boarding a camel train, they ride into the desert to visit the tombs of the pharaohs. The majestic Sphinx serves as a backdrop for snapshots as the girls enjoy a brief holiday from war. A proclamation posted by the Allied military government in Marsala, Sicily, informs the population of the terms of occupation. Allied troops cooperate with local officials in establishing and maintaining order. Civilians are required to surrender all firearms. At the town hall in Mazzara del Vallo, the meeting between an American army captain, the mayor, the bishop, and chief of police is typical of how local authorities are working with the Allies. Their food confiscated by the Nazis, civilians receive emergency rations of bread dough until everybody is fed. Reliable citizens often serve as civil police. Outside Palermo, Sicilian military prisoners are segregated from Italian and German prisoners in the same camp. Interviewed by American officers who speak their language, Sicilian soldiers are allowed to wear civilian clothing and return to their homes. A pardon for Private Ampolo, who salutes and dashes across the street to embrace his mother. Back to a home, a job, and his family. Here is how the Allied military government is bringing order and peace to war-torn Sicily. General Charles de Gaulle arrives at Badeau, North Africa, to inspect units of the French Expeditionary Corps, commanded by General Jouin. General de Gaulle is presented to the officers of the general staff. At Casablanca, General Giraud comes to see vital Lend-Lease material arriving from the United States. Supplies and equipment to refit, to rearm with modern weapons, the armies of France. In Casablanca Harbor, inspecting units of the French fleet, General Giraud goes aboard the battleship Jean Barre to address the officers and men of her crew. Soon to be rearmed in an American shipyard, the Jean Barre will prove a formidable weapon on the side of the United Nations.
advance in Italy. Foggia airfields captured by the British. Naples sacked by the retreating Nazis, now in allied hands as the American Fifth Army takes the road to Rome. Scenes of destruction mark the Nazi retreat. American soldiers share field rations with people whose food was taken by Nazi looters. For one youngster, life begins amid scenes of death. An Italian baby born on the battlefield. Medical workers found the mother wounded by shrapnel. And American Army nurses delivered her child in the field. As Allied troops advance along the Appian Way, officers of the general staff move up with their troops. General Eisenhower, Supreme Commander. General Clark, leader of the fifth, planning the campaign. Allied ports come first pictures of huge invasion craft shuttling powerful armored divisions across the Mediterranean. These unusual vessels, brought across the Atlantic under their own power, land hundreds of tons of tanks and equipment ready for action right on the enemy's beaches. Board one is Randolph Churchill, commando son of Britain's Prime Minister. Anti-aircraft guns are ready, but the Nazi Air Force is conspicuous by its absence. Reinforcements rolling ashore in a never-ending stream. British, Canadians, Americans. The might and resources of the entire Allied war machine is now being hurled against the Nazis in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> 